Hello everyone, this is a practical tutorial for the enhanced PDF extension for Roam Research. Uh, this extension supports PDF highlighting and I'm going to show you how I use it in my academic workflow. Uh, the goal of the tutorial is to be comprehensive and uh, it covers minor details for non-technical users. Uh, therefore, feel free to uh, jump around using the timestamps to topics uh, that you're interested in. So here is the outline of the tutorial, and uh, you will have the same outline uh, in the description of the video with timestamps. To install the uh, extension, uh, the steps are similar to every extension, every JavaScript extension for Rome, uh, you need to have uh, a block like this in your graph, Rome slash JS, and then you need to press tab and make a child, child block. You need to uh, have a code block here. For that, you need to press uh, back code uh, three times, and here is your uh, code block. And uh, you can set the language of this code block here, and the default language is JavaScript, which you're interested in. Next, you need to go to the uh, GitHub page uh, of this extension and uh, copy the required uh, code into this code block. At the beginning of this code, uh, you see a set of parameters that let you uh, customize the extension behavior. So uh, all of the things that you have under PDF parameters are parameters that you can set. And at the bottom of it, you see uh, the source of the extension, the main source of the extension. And uh, you shouldn't change anything in this part of the code. But uh, for parameters, you can customize them as you wish. Uh, there is also a CSS file that you are including for styling. And you need to uh, install that in your home slash CSS page. So again, you need to make a code block in your CSS page and change the language to CSS and paste the code uh, for the PDF styling here. Uh, you don't need to uh, run anything here or press any button here. Uh, you just need to uh, change the language to CSS and you're done. Uh, to run the extension after setting the parameters as you wish, you need to press this button. And uh, you confirm that you know what you're doing. And then when you uh, press this button, it changes the color to yellow and it shows that this, uh, this is running but usually you need to refresh the page uh, for the extension to work. And you need to do this every time that you change any of the parameters. Uh, next, I'm going to show you basics of highlighting. To highlight a PDF, uh, you need to upload it into ROM. You can just drag and drop the file into ROM and if uh, our extension is running, you see this viewer uh, with these three buttons instead of the original uh, PDF viewer of Rome. You can uh, start highlighting by just selecting the text, press add highlight, and uh, you can also hold alt and highlight an area. So this is perfect for uh, highlighting figures. And if you scroll down, you see that highlights are added uh, under the PDF here. As you see, uh, each highlight comes with two buttons. So one of them is 
uh, an alias to the PDF. So on hover, you see that the PDF shows up. The other one is for jumping to the uh, highlight place on the PDF. So if I press this, I jump into uh, the correct place of this highlight on the PDF. And even if the uh, PDF file is closed and it's not visible on your uh, page, it's going to open the highlight on the right sidebar and jump into the correct place. If you click on uh, the highlight text, you see that those two buttons actually contain metadata. So uh, the alias is clear, so it's just uh, a block reference to the PDF uh, block. And uh, this is the metadata that we need for um, the highlight. So you should not change uh, these two pieces of information, otherwise you will lose this highlight. An interesting feature is that you can uh, move around highlights and put them anywhere in your graph. After you uh, get this uh, highlight block, you can uh, move it around. For example, here I opened my daily note page in the right sidebar. I can just uh, drag and drop this highlight to my daily note page. And if I click on the highlight button, this is still opens the document and jump into the correct place. So you can embed your highlight anywhere in your graph. Note that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between uh, highlights on your PDF and extracted highlight uh, that you have as blocks uh, in your ROM graph. So if you delete this, so let's check we have the highlight over here. If I delete this and remove it from the PDF, you see that this block is removed. And same here, if I press escape and delete this block, it's going to uh, delete the highlight from uh, the PDF. So the delay that you observe is just for uh, deleting the block and then deleting the uh, highlight from the page. This is because sometimes you move uh, the block around, for example, like uh, taking it from here to my daily note page. And we don't want to interpret that as uh, deletion. So uh, because of that, we wait a few seconds to make sure that you actually deleted the block and then delete the highlight from the PDF. Uh, next, I'm going to explain uh, the parameters. I'm going to open the parameters in the right sidebar to explain the parameters. The first set of parameters uh, correspond to highlight placement. We have two output modes, which we call them cousin and child mode. The output mode determines where the extracted highlight uh, gets printed in your graph. The simplest uh, output form is when uh, the highlights get printed under the PDF. Uh, block and they become a child of that uh, PDF block and we call this uh, the child mode. So for example here I select text, add highlight and what I see is that uh, this highlight is a child of this PDF block. So let's do it another time, add highlight, it gets extracted and uh, printed under the PDF file. So if I collapse this block, I'm not going to see the PDF uh, related highlights. A slightly more complicated mode is when you want to declutter your view by collapsing both PDF and highlights um, and separately. So for example, here I can do this 
and make the PDF invisible. So for that, you need a parent block for your PDF. And uh, you can imagine that um, I can have highlights here and highlight one, highlight two, and then make them visible too. So this is the idea of uh, having the cousin mode. So basically, if I am in the cousin mode, any extracted highlight is going to get printed here. So highlights, uh, this block is uncle of the PDF block, and these are cousins of PDF block. So you don't need to have that highlight block uh, to start the cousin mode. Uh, if there is no uh, uncle block, we're going to generate that. So currently I'm in uh, cousin mode. I select this title, add it as highlight, and if I scroll down, I see that it's extracted uh, as a cousin block. Uh, you can determine the text of the uncle block by uh, this option. So highlight heading parameters. So currently I have it as highlights and I have uh, it in the bold face. I also note that output highlight uh, at is the parameter that determines if you are in cousin mode or child mode. Next, I want to discuss the metadata route that we use for attribute search. So going back to the child mode as an example, uh, by metadata, we mean any information about the PDF file. So if this is a paper, author of that paper, your publication, title, site key, uh, any of that can be, a, can be an attribute. And we want to look up those attributes in various parts of our code. And we need a place to look at for uh, those attributes. Uh, for that, we look at uh, a metadata route and search all of the subtrees for the metadata information. So in the child mode example, uh, the metadata route is the PDF block itself. For example, if I want to add a title, I go under this route and make a branch and type title. I make it attribute. We also support single column. Uh, but to make it an attribute, I put double colon, and then I'm going to copy the title and put it here. So in this way, I'm generating uh, metadata information and put it in the correct place for the child mode. So in the cousin mode, uh, we always have a grandparent block. So this is my PDF, this is its parent, and this page or any other block is its grandparent. So this grandparent is the metadata root, and we search for metadata in the subtree of this grandparent. So for example, I can have title over here, and this is going to be my metadata. Or if you are interested in put all of the metadata uh, under block, you can just drag and drop it under this metadata. This way I can make it more organized. Another option for highlight placement is append highlight. So this can be true or false. If it's true, the highlights get extracted and printed uh, under the last highlight. So we are appending to the highlight list. If it's false, we are going to print it as the first highlight. So we are prepending the highlight list.
Next, I want to explain uh, the breadcrumbs. Since you can move around highlights easily in your graph, uh, you will lose context. Uh, although you have the link to the PDF, link to the uh, highlight on the PDF, but you cannot visually distinguish between various highlights. So for example, here I add a couple of more highlights. I can open uh, the daily note page in the right sidebar. I can go to my highlights and just take one of them and put it over here. As I mentioned, uh, it still works. So you have what you need to reach the PDF, but there is no way that you can uh, figure out uh, what this PDF is unless you have breadcrumbs. So here I added title as the breadcrumb. And if you remember as a metadata, uh, I specified the title of this PDF document. And now this shows up on hover uh, over this highlight. So the title is here and it shows that it's on page one. And you have that information also here as the number uh, shown uh, in the bottom. As I mentioned, you can have uh, any arbitrary um, metadata as your breadcrumb attribute. You just need to include that metadata as an attribute in the correct place uh, under the metadata root. I explained that metadata root is different in cousin mode and child mode. And uh, if you change this breadcrumb attribute, you should refresh your page and then you get the uh, metadata at, uh, attribute shown uh, on hover of the uh, highlight. Also, since this is uh, dynamically computed, uh, if you don't have title here, for example, so you have set the breadcrumb attribute to title and you don't have any uh, title as metadata for this PDF, you can add it over here, refresh the page, and this gets computed uh, for your highlights. Uh, the next parameter is uh, at colored highlights. So you can uh, set it to be true or false. And uh, as you see, when I uh, select highlights, it's not colored over here. So I'm not seeing any yellow color over here. And uh, I can change the highlight color to, for example, red. And I see that this color is changed to red. And if you set this as false, we are not uh, changing the uh, color of the extracted highlight in your graph. Uh, you just uh, change the color on your PDF file and uh, this remain without any color. If you set it to, you can uh, have whatever color you have on your PDF file for the highlight in your graph. So I can change it to blue and this changes to blue. And uh, but I think it's a good idea to have this as true because uh, we do this through uh, specific tags and you can use these tags for filtering highlights. And if you assign meaning to colors, then it's a good way of processing extracted information. So for example, here, if I change the highlight color to yellow, you see that the tag is changed to yellow. Uh, but note that this is a one-way relationship, so you cannot change this to blue and uh, change the color of the highlight on PDF to blue. You can just do this on the PDF file, and then it gets re reflected um, in the extracted text.
Next, we have a set of parameters for block reference to highlights. Uh, we treat uh, block reference especially, so we have various options for them. You can use highlight block reference in outlines and keep the main uh, highlight untouched. For example, I can uh, take this highlight back to its correct place and copy block reference and paste it here. And you see that you get these four buttons. Two of them are familiar, PDF alias button, and this one is jump to annotation button. These two have different functionalities. Uh, so the first one converts uh, this block reference to text. So if I press this, I get the text of the highlight extracted. I lose any connection to the original uh, location of the highlight or the original source of the highlight, which is a PDF file. If I press this, I get an alias to the actual highlight. So I can jump into the highlight by uh, pressing shift click. You can ch change the uh, characters of uh, convert to text and convert to alias buttons here in the parameters. We have two other options for block references. The first one is uh, copy block reference. So if it's set to true, whenever you add highlight, you get uh, a copy of a block reference to the extracted highlight in your clipboard. So for example, here I just extracted this. I haven't done anything else. If I paste my clipboard, I get a block reference to the highlight. So this is a quick way of uh, outlining a related work, for example. So I'm reading multiple papers. I'm extracting highlights. I just copy, uh, I just paste uh, the copied uh, block reference in my outline. Another option that is related to block reference is the sort option. So sort button text. So if you think about it, uh, whenever you add highlights, you can go back and forth and you can change the order of the extracted highlights. So uh, if you have it as append or prepend, it doesn't matter. So you can go to page five and add some highlight and then go back to page one and add another highlight. So you don't have highlights in uh, the correct order that they are in the uh, paper. So to uh, have a sorted list of highlights for reviews, for example, you can do this. You can press this button and make a child block for your PDF block. So I should press tab to make a child block. I can make a button by um, pressing the uh, curly brackets twice and then paste this text. So you can specify this text, you can just make it sort or whatever. Um, and if you press this, now you have a button. When the button changes its shape, it means that it's ready. Now, if you press this, uh, it generates a uh, sorted uh, block reference to highlights. So these are my extracted highlights. These are block reference to them. Uh, page one, page two, and page three. Take this out and change this to review. And now I have my review block, highlight block, and PDF and metadata.
So the next set of options are PDF viewer options. Um, we have them over here. We have static width and height and minimum width and height. So if the right sidebar is open, the bits is uh, dynamically changing. So it goes up to uh, the width that you have for your role page. You know that you can have a full width and change it currently. My uh, role page width is limited. So it just uh, fit out whatever width is available. And we can also open this in the right sidebar and we can dynamically change the size of two of them. Uh, but when the right sidebar is open, uh, the size is set by static uh, parameters. So if I close the right sidebar, uh, I have a large uh, static uh, set of parameters, so it fills out the whole page. And actually, I've zoomed in my uh, web page. And actually, I've zoomed into my web page, so this is why uh, I have uh, filled like the right side of the web page. And mean width and height are clear, so you cannot reduce the size of the PDF viewer and make, th make it less than these two. Finally, we have two parameters for citation formats. So uh, we have the citation format string. There are two things that you can include in this string. One is site key, the other one is page. And you can have them in any string. So currently I have two parentheses around them and separated by a comma. And uh, page is page number of that highlight, it's clear. Site key is an attribute, so you need to include that uh, in the subtree uh, rooted in your metadata root. So for example, in cousin mode, my metadata root is this page. I can have site key anywhere. I add the site key here. And the spelling should be like this. And I say, uh, I don't know, Snelly uh, 2019. So this is my site key. So I added this site key. Uh, I need to refresh the page uh, to make it work. And also, you need to <clears throat> specify the citation format <clears throat> and refresh the page. So it's better to have uh, one citation format set and uh, use it for all of the highlights. So these are some suggestions. So if you use this, you can disable uh, the citation and that's the case for most of the options. So you can disable, for example, uh, alias uh, character and text character uh, by just uh, putting an empty string. Here you can do the same. This is, for example, a popular way of having citation. So when you use Zotero uh, imported files, uh, the name of the PDF page is usually at sign and citation key. And you also have the site key as one of the metadata. And if you have this, uh, it will give you uh, a clickable uh, citation. So I'm going to demonstrate this next. Let's first demonstrate this for this simple example where I manually type the site key. So let me refresh the page. Now, if you look at uh, the previously extracted highlights, you don't see any citation information here. But if I add a new highlight, it's going to get appended to the highlight list because of the parameter setting. 
and you see that the citation information uh, is also extracted. So this is the citation key and this is the page number. So let's do the same thing for files imported from Zotero. So uh, for Zotero, you can install an add-on and that add-on can uh, export uh, metadata and even highlights of a PDF file uh, from Zotero to a JSON file. And then you can upload that uh, JSON file and import it to Rome. So I have preferred uh, a JSON file. I'm just going to import it to Rome. And whenever you import a file, you get uh, that under import block in your daily notes page. And uh, as I mentioned, the format of uh, the exported file is like this. So you have a page and you have the site key and add sign in front of it. So if I click on this, it takes me to the page for this document. So this is the metadata. So our PDF highlighter is very much compatible with this because all of them are attributes. Now I have changed the citation format to this. Let's have another highlight here. So if I add the highlight, now I see this alias and it says that uh, if I click on this, it takes me to this same page. So let's open it in the sidebar. Yeah, so it correctly takes me to the uh, page and still we have the page number issue. So for that, we added another option uh, which you can use and you just need to uh, put it as a metadata. So now if I go to the same page and add a highlight, the page number is one. So it gets subtracted uh, from the uh, PDF page number. And finally, we have another option for citation, uh, which people use in Rome. So it's block code uh, perfect. So currently it's disabled. If you want to enable it, you can add this, or you can also add this. So uh, this is going to generate uh, highlights as block codes. Does uh, to illustrate this quickly, uh, it's going to add uh, this uh, prefix to all of your highlights and and gives you a visually distinct block. Okay, now that we are done with uh, parameters, I wanted to explain. Uh, my academic workflow. So I uh, previously mentioned Zotero add-on. So uh, if you have that, you can export uh, metadata easily from Zotero to a JSON file and import that to Rome. And that helps a lot to set up uh, for the PDF highlighter. And then you can drag and drop the PDF file into Rome and start highlighting. I usually use the cousin mode. So let me go back to the Zotero imported uh, page and explain the workflow on an example. So here is the page that I imported previously. We have all of the required metadata. If you're using page offset, you need to include that here. And then I have a block for my PDF and highlights block uh, is over here. I usually use the cousin mode. And another thing to notice is that the quality of uh, text extraction uh, is not that good for math and formula. So if you want to extract math and formula, it's better to uh, use the area highlights.
Next, uh, I suggest to open the highlight block in the cousin mode in the uh, right sidebar. Usually, I have uh, a template, a paper review template, which is a smart block. And uh, when I add highlights, I organize the highlights under these terms. So this is my one paragraph summary. I'm going to write it when I'm finished with the paper. This is how it's related to uh, my research. And this is an important one, notation and abbreviation. So usually you see that uh, in papers you have lots of notations. It's hard to keep track of all of them. For example, uh, let's say this is single cell RNA sequencing. I add it as a highlight. I get it over here. I just drag and drop it to abbreviation. And now I know that strna sick is single cell RNA sick. So th this is very good for uh, keeping track of abbreviation. So if uh, there are notations, there are mathematical, for example, notation, you can uh, have an area highlight and put it over here and you can just collapse them and whenever you need to look them up just uh, go back to this block. I usually uh, keep track of uh, relevant papers. Uh, they appear mostly in related work and introduction and if I'm new to the field I'm going to list main one of them and that can be done by just uh, text highlight or area highlight where I usually uh, jump into, for example, uh, here, use the area highlight tool to capture this. And I get it here. I drag and drop it under the history. And then these are like uh, question prompts for uh, paper reviewing. So what is the research question that they try to answer? Is there any new method uh, which is interesting? Uh, what are the old methods that are interesting? And these are usually uh, things that I'm not aware of. So I just list them over here. And some of the findings, any references specifically that you need to uh, follow. So this is, I think, a very regular template that you can generate using your own native template or uh, smart block. But I found it very handy to be able to move around uh, highlight blocks and also annotate them. So for example, if I uh, extract any uh, part of the text, I can drag and drop it as, let's say, new method. And then I can have a parent block. So usually I have uh, things that I uh, write in my own boards as a parent of the actual highlight block. So in my own board summary is this. And in this way, uh, you, you can recall the actual content by just looking at your summary, and then if necessary, you can uh, take a look at the actual content of the paper. Another good practice is to have the uh, name of the paper extracted as a highlight, so it helps you to jump to the beginning of the uh, PDF easily. So I previously had this, and I have it over here and I can jump to the first page easily. So uh, is a very handy way of navigation. And as I explained, at the end, you can <clears throat> sort all of the highlights and uh, generate a list of sorted uh, block reference to highlights for future review. Yeah, so uh, I found this way of clustering highlights under the uh, actual PDF file uh, very useful and um, it gives you a concise representation of the material. So in uh, one level, you go from uh, PDF file to highlights, and on another level, you go from highlights to your uh, short summaries, like one sentence summary of uh, main points.
and then all of them gets clustered under relevant uh, questions and relevant um, titles like notation and abbreviation and this is a better structure compared to uh, the original paper which uh, has a different flow and lots of redundancy so it's a better way of uh, compressing the content next i wanted to describe how i use color uh, for different types of highlights so I usually have the default yellow color for uh, things that are necessary to follow the paper. So if I come back to this paper, I read this one, I read this one, I can follow the argument. And usually this is happening like in the title, last paragraph of introduction, like first paragraph of each of the sections. Usually uh, those are the places that I have this default highlight. But then I have five other colors uh, which I use to keep track of various things. So for example, if there is something that I don't understand and I want to follow up on, I usually use, use red. If there is a very important point, I make it a different yellow, it's brighter. Uh, if there is a main takeaway or uh, something that I want to quote, and use it in my own writing and these are rare uh, i use green and abbreviation blue and as i mentioned you can have these colors in your graph and uh, this was my color coding system uh, before rome now if i use this color coding system in rome because i have different tags for each color i can keep track of uh things uh using filtering and query and other uh functionalities that we have in rome for example uh i'm going to add a couple of highlights and make this question make this one question uh make this one abbreviation for example and i can use filtering and filter for red. So these are all of the questions that I have that I want to follow up on uh, for this paper. So this is a very uh, neat way of uh, keeping track of uh, where you were and uh, compress information and uh, incremental learning. So you can come back to this and uh, revisit the highlights based on the colors, based on the filtering, uh, you can continue learning. You can query uh, using colors and various other tags that you can add to each highlight to um, keep track of things that you want to learn or things uh, or topics that you are interested in and you want to follow up on. Um, you can add uh, these as cards to your uh, space repetition system. Yeah, so this was my uh, academic workflow and uh, full tutorial of the uh, PDF highlighter extension. So let us know what you think about the uh, extension and what features you are interested in uh, that we can add. And if you find any bug and issue, please let us know. And thank you.